The Japanese call it a game show, but it's more like a mobile torture chamber. And it certainly adds up to some of the weirdest television in the world. The idea is for contestants to travel around the world. That part sounds pretty good. But in each place, they submit to stunts that would have been the envy of the Spanish Inquisition. It's called the gammon. That means to persevere, to endure. Even watching it is an endurance test in itself. Three hours of the strangest things you'll see on television. And 20 million Japanese tune in. The person who is watching the government program, maybe they have fun. But for the participant, it's uh, like a torture. Ready! How long can you hold a block of ice between your feet? That pretty well sums up what the gammon is all about. Get together 600 university students to audition for the show. Everybody, my name is Rick Joshua. I am from Denima. Think of something nasty, like the ice test, and to make things worse, spray them with cold water. The last 30 to give in will become the cast for the show. Victims for even nastier things up ahead. Uni students having some harmless fun? Or is it a new kind of sport? A bizarre contest to prove your courage? Does it say something deep and meaningful about the Japanese? Or is it just a clever way of making a TV show out of torture? Maybe it's all of those things. But one thing you can be sure of, it could only ever happen in Japan. Meet the mastermind behind the game, producer Kenji Homer. He's the one who thinks up those nasty tricks. Now, just a yes or a no. Does he agree that it's like torture? Yes, it looks like yes. <laughs> is it as painful as it looks? Does it really hurt that much? It is very painful. <laughs> you should try. <laughs> Unless you try, you never understand how painful it is. No one knows more about what it takes to play the gammon than these four. Hard men to crack, and that's what makes them champions. Toshi, he's a law student. Ruichi studies engineering. Etsuhiro, he's doing economics. And Yasuhiro is studying electrical technology. How does he stand it? How does he stand the pain? <laughs> when he has to suffer, when to, he has to endure, always he tries to think something nice, something joyful, something uh, beautiful. To get his mind off it. <laughs> With all the pressures there are on these students to do well at university, you'd have to wonder why would anyone think of putting them under even more pressure with something like the gammon. Uh, when he was young, he practiced karate or judo, and then he learned from uh, this training to be patient, to endure things. Uh, nowadays, people would, uh, are saying that the young students or young generation, they don't have any guts as they, uh, the old generation had. No guts. It's what a lot of people will tell you about youth today. 
And that's what gave Kenji Homer the idea for his show, The Gammon. He says, ask young Japanese men to put up with a bit of pain, and they'll soon show you they can do it. Here's the proof, says producer Kenji Homer, that Japanese students aren't a bunch of softies. Who can last the longest being dragged over a gravel pit on the seat of his pants? But what do you get for going through two months of torture tests like this? Hardly a pot of gold. First prize is a week's holiday for two in America. When you play the gammon, you really do start from the bottom. He could not sit on the uh, chair for one week. His backside hurt too much. Oh, yes. <laughs> I got many scratches, and now I have very tough bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine. <laughs> Up there are the offices of the Kinema Tokyo Company, the people who produce and package the gammon. Like most Japanese workers, the staff here are loyal to the boss. Painfully loyal, in fact. He has tried the test before with his staff. So his staff, in a way, are his guinea pigs. He tests the torches out on them. Uh, it's very true. When the young, uh, new people would come in, to this uh, company, all these uh, the young uh, newcomers has to be tested uh, on this gammon game. Does Mr. Homer have trouble keeping his staff? Yeah. Uh, until now, they stayed. <laughs> it's a painful way to see the world. You see. They didn't come here just to look at the pyramids. Going to exotic places is part of the incentive. As if the desert sand isn't hot enough, Mr. Homer plans to make it even hotter. So superheated sand and something even worse, pinpointing the sun's rays with a magnifying glass. A strange exercise in international goodwill. Egyptians putting the heat on the Japanese. <laughs> Is there no limit to Mr. Homer's imagination? <laughs> you know, seeing this game of gammon, you could easily think that it's a very cruel game and that the people behind it are sadistic. Ah, so they were on a television show, you know, show you game, I said, eh? The young people, they will look at this game as a sport. They enjoy looking at it. But uh, the other group of the audience is the generation of their uh, parents. They would uh, look at this uh, program very uh, sadistic. Does he think it's cruel, sadistic? He himself does not think it's very cruel. from the pyramids to a bull ring in Spain. And this is what our students are told could happen to them. But they're reassured that there's a doctor standing by and a man with a gun. The test today, don't look back. See how long you can stand your ground before running for cover. <laughs> There never was any danger, but then that's not what they're led to believe. If all that was a joke, this certainly isn't. They're still in Spain, where the pain falls mainly on the... Well, we'll see.
a new kind of Spanish Inquisition, and Toshi is taking the brunt of it, showing the kind of grit that makes a gammon champion. How many times, Toshi, uh, were you hit by the ball? Uh, um, 30 or 40 times. After being hit all those times, could you sit down? No, <laughs> I could. <laughs> uh, I, I couldn't walk. <laughs> this hapless contestant had to give up early when that projectile strayed off tuck. I couldn't walk and I couldn't speak. I couldn't speak. I, uh, I, can, I could only cry. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Does he ever try some of the tests on himself? Yeah. No, he will never try. Even he has to die. <laughs> he will not be able to do it. He couldn't stand the pain? He could not stand any longer the pain or the heat or the coldness. <laughs> Drinking beer in the Netherlands. But what's the catch? They can't do what they so desperately need to do without dropping out of the game. At the moment of giving in, it's a hero finds he's got more self-restraint than he thought possible. The amazing thing about this pentathlon of torture is that so far, no one has been seriously hurt. Scratches, blisters, and a lot of bruised dignity, perhaps. And to be sure, when at last it's all over, it's a great relief. You know, it may suggest, this game of gammon, to some people that maybe there's something very strange about Japanese society, maybe a streak of cruelty, and that's why we have games like Gammon. Ah, so it's more kicking us. That's what I said earlier. It is right. The, uh, he takes this Gammon game as uh, for young people to be uh, challengeable, and also take this game as a sport, and they enjoy uh, this con uh, cruel contest as a sport. Hello, I'm Liam Bartlett. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.